Hello and midweek greetings from Radically Rational and RadicallyRational.com. You know that I use you folks for some couch time every now and then, and I'm going to ask you to help me sort through this one. I did not watch the All-Star Game last night. Now understand, it wasn't a protest, it wasn't a statement, it was not some kind of adamant thing, it was nothing I was opposed to. I just didn't feel the need to watch it. And it's a little interesting because if anything, I've cozied back up to baseball a lot over the last few years. And I've really enjoyed the season thus far, but it just really didn't make me want to watch it. We opted instead for a 14th rerun of Major Crimes. And in retrospect on Wednesday morning, it was a good decision, BB. <laughs> so again, I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way. I don't care what kind of light beer somebody drinks or doesn't drink. I don't care. I wasn't angry about anything. I just didn't need to see it. And that made me a little sad because the All-Star Game was a really big deal to me when I was a kid. In fact, I'm so old that I remember when Major League Baseball played two, count them, two All-Star Games every summer. Hmm. Um, I have watched a lot of baseball and I've found to my surprise that I think the pitch clock is working really well. But it should come as no surprise that the Major League Baseball Players Association wants to quote, tweak and expand the pitch clock for the postseason. Of course they do. It makes no sense whatsoever. Baseball has never been in any way confined by any sense of foolish consistency. Um, I'm okay with the two new rules in the NBA, however. One awards coaches a second in-game challenge if their first one is successful. The other punishes flopping by awarding the flopped upon team a free throw. And yes, I just call them the flopped upon team. Hubie Brown would be proud of me. Okay, this is gonna get crazy at Northwestern if it hasn't already. So Northwestern says they fired Pat Fitzgerald for cause because he either was aware of the hazing thing or should have been aware of the hazing thing. Okay, but uh, Patty got himself a pretty good lawyer and he points out that number one, there may be a basic violation of Fitzgerald's contract here. And, and also he points out that there was a verbal agreement earlier that all uh, the only punishment that Fitzgerald was going to get was a two-week unpaid suspension. And in Illinois, those oral contracts are binding. There's a lot at stake here because Fitzgerald still has $40 million remaining on his contract. Northwestern will maintain they don't owe him a cent. They will lose that one. Pat is going to get paid. Hazing's really stupid. And so is speeding. You've been keeping track of this. Georgia Bulldog football players have rung up 11, count them 11, traffic moving violations since that horrific double fatality drag racing crash back in mid-January. And this is where I just had to shake my head. So Georgia coach Kirby Smart says part of the problem is that the new NIL opportunities have given the players access to faster cars. I don't even know how to react. Um, okay, so I open this sports mention, this little sports corner with a nostalgic reference. I'm gonna close it with another one. I have no idea why I did this Monday, but I wanted to. All of a sudden, I just wanted to Google Meredith to Hayes video. Oh man, it was so great. I really recommend you do the same thing. The clip that I found was about 14 minutes long and it was unbelievable. And one, it just took me back to a time uh, when I just loved it so much. But the other thing is, it reinforced my certainty that the most influential, I did not say the best, although he was way more skillful than people realize, the most influential player in the history of pro football is Bob Hayes. Bob Hayes transformed the sport completely, yeah more influential than, than Jim Brown, more influential than Tom Brady, more influential than anybody. He changed the entire sport. Turning the page to some other stuff. Here's a guy that has one and only one move, delay and deflect, 
There is no justification for delaying Trump's trial. In fact, that's a disservice to voters who deserve clarity on that question. You know, under the Constitution, we as American citizens are all entitled to a speedy trial. It's very telling that he doesn't want one. And you do realize this will hardly be the only Trump trial, correct? Because Jumpin' Jack and Fanny are just getting warmed up. Rhetorical question, who's dumber than Tommy Tuberville? That's a tough one, but the answer may be Jim Jordan. So what a pleasure it's going to be today to watch Jordan grandstand and bloviate at that uh, Judiciary Committee hearing. But I do take comfort in the knowledge that Christopher Wray has at least 200 IQ points on Jim Jordan. But back to Tuberville, here's a guy that had to be begged and then obviously politically threatened to condemn white nationalism. He didn't want to do it. He didn't want to condemn white nationalism. So my question is, how did a brain that small ever absorb the basic concepts of, say, cover three? That's amazing. And yet our system is so broken right now that he is currently the most powerful senator in the chamber, one who has not only the ability and the power, but the desire to weaken our national security. And this from the party of national security. Okay. The distinction of person of the 21st century is already wrapped up, and we're not even a quarter of the way through the 21st century. It's Zelensky. He is a giant. I understand his frustration with NATO right now, but in this case, he's wrong. Now is not the time to admit Ukraine. And finally, I'm going to go Charlton Heston on you in response to this. The entire Florida coral reef ecosystem is coming undone in the hot water. So here I go with Chuck. God damn you all to hell. This is why we can't have nice things. Have a good Wednesday. We're radically rational.